this video and all other videos on this channel for entertainment purposes only. The content of this video and all other videos on this channel are the opinions of the creator only and do not constitute legal, trading, investment, or financial advice of any kind. Investing carries a high level of risk and the majority of retail clients lose money. Do not invest in capital unless you understand the risks and you are prepared to lose it all. All right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and what a week, eh? What a week. We are living through history. We are living through what I believe is going to turn out to be the biggest Fed blunder in history. We cut 50 basis points yesterday leaving plenty of people to speculate that this is an admission they probably should have cut 25 basis points in July. Of course, I've been in the camp of people that has been suggesting we should have seen a 25 basis point cut, and we have got a very, very stubborn Fed, in my humble opinion. I've also been accusing the Fed of engineering a controlled demolition. I know a lot of people don't like that idea, but I think it's a requirement to cause a deflationary collapse in order to maintain dollar dominance when they move into the next round of printing. 105 out of 114 economists were wrong in expecting a 25 basis point cut. Yesterday, I I did observe this on Twitter. The consensus was indeed that they couldn't do a 50 basis point cut. I've been making videos about the way the market was suggesting a 50 basis point cut would cause panic and all of this kind of thing. And so the question is, is this camel on the internet more accurate than 105 economists? And the absolute truth of the matter is, as always, okay, genuinely speaking, it is not about being right or wrong. It's not about I told you so. It's not about clout. It's about staying on the right side of the trade. Yes, our life is easier when things go according to the expectations, but the Fed could have just as easily done a 25 basis point cut yesterday. It could have just as easily done a 75 basis point cut. And again, it's not about I told you so's or clout or any of that stuff. It's about looking at the data and coming up with a base case hypothesis and then doing our best to stay on the right side of the trade, right? That's what actually matters. And under the hood, inflation is already at target and it's going to continue to drop. Unemployment is nearing recessionary levels, okay? And think about it. These are the two things, the only two things that the Fed actually pays attention to in terms of where it should keep its interest rates. The Fed is no longer 170 basis points behind the curve since it's done a 50 basis point cut. We are somewhere in the neighborhood of 120 basis points behind the curve, but that's not nothing, right? That's still significant. Further cuts and probably more aggressive cuts are just around the corner. And meanwhile, the yield curve is still inverted for a record of over 800 days. Again, that's not nothing. Tell that to the bond market. The Fed is indeed very, very late to cut, and this is probably shaping up to be the largest Fed blunder in history. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm doom posting and calling for an imminent top and a big bear market, okay? It doesn't mean we can't rally. In fact, I think we are in the midst of setting that third and final blow off top angle. I think we have a good solid couple of weeks ahead of us where we will probably see very, very strong rallies across the board. I think now we've got the best chance we've had in about six months to see continuation of upside for the Bitcoin market. All of this macro stuff, operates with a lag, okay? You can't just change the interest rates and then expect everything to have a knock-on effect immediately in the following days and weeks, okay? This kind of changes to interest rates, any kind of macro changes take many, many weeks and months to develop. It does mean, however, we are going to get very, very wild in the not-too-distant future. And I'm sure you are well aware, I'm sure you've experienced this, whether personally or just from observing Twitter, but you're seeing all kinds of things like totally confused by the Fed rate cut decision. This guy says, look, I was in the no rate cut this year camp, so clearly wrong. But all we keep hearing about is how good the economy remains and how inflation is coming down. And Powell says today, the economy is strong overall. Next thing you know, they're cutting by 50 basis points. And again, I suggest to you not to pay attention to what the Fed says, okay? The Fed, the media, all of this stuff, this guy works for CNBC. All they do is perform damage control. That's their job, to herd retail into the wrong direction. And I could be wrong about that. It could be sheer, utter incompetence. Maybe this camel on the internet knows better than all of these macro guys. Maybe. But I don't believe that. What I believe is they all work for a team, they've all got a job, and they are mandated to steer the majority of the market in the wrong direction. I genuinely don't believe they can all be that incompetent. I just don't, I don't see it because I don't think it's that complicated. Anyone that puts in the study, anyone that puts in the hours will be able to arrive at these same sorts of conclusions. So either they all turn up to work and sit around and do absolutely nothing all day, or there's something a little bit more sinister going on. And again, we can't prove, I, there's no way I can know for sure, but I have always operated from a place of assuming these people hate us and do not have our best interests at heart. And that has historically worked very well for me. I'm gonna pause here and shout out OV Crypto again for drawing more and more parallels, okay, to 2007, 2008. Look how well this simulation is playing out. So I showed in this video that the setup was incredibly similar to 2007. We had the VIX spiking. We had this second angle violation that ultimately resolved to a blow off top third angle. The setup at the time was eerily similar for a number of reasons. Number one, we got the second angle violation. Number two, we got the VIX spike. Number three, the price that this top occurred at was 10x higher than back in 2007 
The low that we formed was 10x higher than the low we formed in 2007. The dates were just a few days apart. We had an FOMC meeting that occurred on September 18th in both instances, and we've now seen and confirmed 50 basis points in both instances. Not to mention this was coming at a time when the Fed funds rate was the same this time around as it was back in 2007. And the simulation continues to get even more simulated. Remember the headlines in 2007 calling for a soft landing? Now we've got the exact same soft landing headlines lines playing out today okay so here we go in white we've got 2007 okay you can see soft landing ahead and what have we got today after the 50 basis points cut that occurred at the exact same type of price structure or the exact same date from the exact same fed funds rate with the exact same amount of cuts now we've got the exact same headlines again okay the economy is heading for a soft landing <laughs> so this thing is actually playing out to the tick and whilst the under the hood setup is kind of different, right? We haven't necessarily got the subprime mortgages. This time around, it's more likely to be China leading the deflation. You can't deny that history seemingly is repeating, not just rhyming, but repeating this time around. So wild times to be alive. And if this thing is gonna continue, then we should expect one third and final blow off top angle to come in. And as I'm gonna show you in the charts in just a minute, I think we're right in the middle of that already. Yesterday, I kept talking about how I don't focus on the tape in the day. I don't hang off every word Powell says. I don't look at the one minute charts, right? I don't care. That's what I kept saying. I don't care what the price does yesterday. What I'm interested in is what the price does today and Friday. The weekly closes will be the most important because inevitably, just like in CPI, we get either up, down, up, or we get down, up, down. Okay, but they shake everyone out and trap everyone and then run their stops and then reveal the direction. During FOMC, we typically get the rate decision announced and markets rally, right? And then power talks and markets dump. And then the true direction is revealed thereafter, whether it's up or down. So as I was saying, you know, I don't get in the way of this. I don't care. There's always people that comment, oh, it's dumping, it's pumping, right? But it doesn't matter. What matters is what happens to price today and more importantly, what happens on Friday. But this is, in my humble opinion, the biggest piece of alpha I've ever come across in my entire life. This really, really speaks to not being a day trader and instead trading only the daily time frame and being a swing trader. In blue, you can see the gains that the S&P 500 makes after hours, okay, when the market is closed. Versus in orange, you can see the moves and the gains the S&P 500 makes intraday, okay? What does this chart tell us? It tells us that all of the gains from the S&P 500 come after the market is closed. So all those day traders that are getting chopped up, making day trades, okay, trying to be a day trader, this is your overall performance. The market barely actually does any movement at all. If anything, it spends a great deal of time negative in the day and all of the price gains are made overnight when the market gaps up, opens higher the following day. And so this speaks to two things. Number one, it speaks to don't be a day trader, be a swing trader, okay? This is where all the gains are made when everyone is tucked up asleep at night. And it also speaks to not trade in the tape, right, on the day. All of this is the performance of the people that were trying to day trade yesterday, the people that were hanging off every word, the people that were looking at the one minute or five minute charts and going, Bitcoin's pumping, Bitcoin's dumping, right? The biggest way to extract money from the markets Okay, is to take a swing position and allow this thing to play out whilst we're tucked up asleep in bed. And of course, we are now at that stage where first they mocked you. They mocked us for our opinions. They mocked us for doing the work. They mocked us for saying things against the grain. And now they're going to copy us. Now it's time for them to hop on board, realize they were wrong and start to say things like, well, this was my base case all along. Third and final angle was my base case all along, right? <laughs> Left translation was my base case all along. There should be room for one third and final angle, one final high in the stock market to come in. And more importantly, to you guys at least, I know, Bitcoin is setting up for this to be its final leg to the upside to complete its fifth wave. And if this thing is to form before the end of this year, then it will indeed qualify as a left translated cycle top. What's so hilarious to me about this is if this thing is to play out, then at the lows, everyone was positioned for what even is left translation? Why are you making up terms? It's never made an all-time high before the halving, so therefore it couldn't possibly make an all-time high before the halving. Only here did they believe it. Remember, it was, we're going back to 14K, we're going back to the lows, biggest bull trap of all time, 702 retracement, dumped the whole stack. Only here did I see all of those people that were aggressively negative towards left translation in the comments suddenly start to flip to left translation is my base case. Then <laughs> they got chopped up for six months. They got really, really toxic. The pendulum swung to a complete extreme in this neighborhood. Now all it will take is a big, strong push, something akin to this. And all of those same people will immediately be back in my comment section telling me left translation was my base case the whole time. And this is just how markets work. People don't want to do the work. They don't want to put in the hours. They don't want to put in the study. Okay. Instead, they want to be lazy. They want to look around. They want to copy everyone online. 
And ultimately their story will be that they missed out on the move, they bought the top, they sold the lows, and then had to be forced back into buy the top before this thing moves into a two year buyout market. Of course, if we do indeed see this play out, it is in this neighborhood that most people will be ridiculed for selling. If we get up to here, people will say this party's just getting started. 300K is coming, a big rip roaring bull market, no more four year cycles. All of those narratives will proliferate, soft landing, no possible way anything bad can happen from here. And the reality is the majority of market participants will have completely failed to capture any of the meat of this entire bull run. When really a little bit of objectivity, a little bit of being able to zoom out and stand with a base case hypothesis, waiting for it to be invalidated rather than try to invalidate it before it even has begun will have been all that was required to stay on top of these markets. So as I was saying, not focusing on the tape yesterday, but instead focusing on the tape today and Friday. Think about this. If we flip into a weekly chart, okay, this will look like an incredibly bullish weekly breakout if indeed we can close somewhere above this downward sloping red resistance line into the week. That will set us up for another push towards the top of this range. And then the question becomes, can we break out and start to target a 100k similarly for the stock market if you were to take a look at this you'd be tempted to say well that's the top okay we know there's some cycle lows coming and everyone's going to sell off because 50 basis points is going to cause a rate cut but if we take a look at the futures okay we're already gapping up to new highs now again it speaks to not paying attention to the tape not focusing on the price action on the day standing out the way of the market letting the volatility play itself out and then all the while we're respecting third angles we are in that blow off top moment now we are finally here we are finally looking for this to be my area where i look for a trend line breakdown i sell i flip short and i officially declare tops similarly for the nasdaq looks like a failed breakout right if you're focusing on the tape but what happens if we flip onto the futures okay we're now going to gap up break out recover the second angle and be looking for third and final blow off top angles to come in absolutely wild times to be alive same deal with the dow that looks like a pretty bearish candle if you're focused in on the FOMC candle. Of course, if you know where to look, you won't be doing this. And the VIX looks to be getting crushed into our cycle low, getting ready to put some hedges on and take advantage of what I believe will be the trade of the decade. So as you can see, I'm not saying anything different, right? I'm not saying anything different at all. There's the half cycle low for gold, I think. So long and strong there. See if we can get a nice big push cycle low. And then I'll be looking to see if we can get one final squeeze out of there. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. We'll deal with that as it comes, depending on the setup. Again, breakout, retest, resumption. This should be good for the minor, silver minor position we've got in the level three members section dollar okay the hint if you knew where to look was in the failed cycle as of yesterday this should start to collapse downwards now and then we'll be hunting that three-year cycle low ready for that deflationary bust to come in sometime in the not too distant future right and again the bond market going to continue to move to the downside because it knows that we have only just begun with the rate cuts absolutely wild times to be alive we are living through the biggest fed blunder in history that does not mean everything has to come tumbling down now that does not mean we have to have all the thumbnails on fire just yet like I've been saying, long and strong, third angles, blow off top, 100k Bitcoin. I still stand with all of that stuff. I'm your boy Camel. What a week. I hope you're doing well in life. Until next time, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye. Camel Finet, he's the man to see. Rocking the markets with his contrarian spree. Trades like a pro, no fear, no shame. Sticking to his guns in his money game. He's a badass. Oh, yes, indeed. Camel Finance got the markets key, taking a stormy on.